Barney friends. <clears throat> I'm Sarah Satch and welcome to our Coffee and Crochet podcast live on YouTube with me, Sarah Satch. I often la laugh because a lot of people will say, so what's your name? And I'll say Sarah Satch and they'll say, how do you spell that? And I'll say S-A-R-A -A. and they're like, no, no, your last name. I'm like, oh, S-A-C-H, Satch, like patch. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny, but it is. They rarely ever know how to say my last name, even though I've just said it. <laughs> well, it's not the name I was born with. My original name was not Satch, but I married a Satch, and I love Satch. I think Sarah Satch has a ring to it, don't you? <laughs> well, we have a lot of really fun things to talk about today. Um, first thing I wanted to do is um, explain, I um, had a couple of people contact me this week about my Etsy shop, and they said, you don't have any of your bags for the, the coffee and crochet with Sarah, you don't have any of your bags listed in your Etsy shop, and I said, uh, no, because since we moved, I can't find them. <laughs> I had a, lot, a bunch of them ready, you know, made up, ready to go. And I cannot find the container that I put all of those bags in. So I have uh, two bags over there, one of the zip bags and one of the project bags that we'll be using for our giveaways for the next two months. And hopefully I'll be able to find the rest of them. <laughs> I had a bunch made up so they would be ready and they're not. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the August giveaway. Um, I'm not going to start it today. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to change it up just a little bit, and we're going to start the August giveaway on the, the August, not August, <laughs> on the second Tuesday of this month, and it'll go for the next two weeks after that, all right? I've been really sick this week. I've got some uh, physical issues that I'm dealing with, and I just got away from us, and so we're going to do that next week. We'll start it next week for our giveaway. Now, the name Satch, someone asked me if it was German. If it was German, it would be Sock, probably like Bach. But actually, it's an English name. My husband's family is from uh, England. So, anyway, that's that. Okay, so, let's clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about one other thing before we get started into our conversation. Um, you know, I love to watch other uh, craft and crochet YouTube videos. I, I enjoy that. There's a lot of really great ones out there. There's a lot out there that are so silly and fun. And there's a lot of them out there that I think um, the term I want to use is a little bit heavy. <laughs> Just... Um, too much sadness or depression or things like that that I think maybe uh, maybe shouldn't be talked about. It's a little more personal. And that's why I try to keep my videos a little bit light. Um, I, it's not a game. It's not an act. It's who I am. But I try not to bring in a lot of negativity. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I was one of the videos that I enjoy watching from time to time is Mikey from the Crochet Crowd. I think that um, he and I think a lot alike when it comes to crochet. Um, he's very much an artist, not just technical stuff, but an artist. And I've been following him for many years, um, just seeing the things that he designs in crochet are, in my opinion, are just amazing. Well, he put out a video this last week about stopping the negativity and the unkindness in the crochet world. And I feel really sad that he had to do that. But I really agree with what he had to say. And um, one of the things that were addressed was when you go into a group, um, say on Facebook or Ravelry or something, and someone posts uh, something that they made, and they may be a newer crocheter or not, and you don't care for it, what they're posting as far as the item or the colors, and you say something unkind. And I just totally agree with him that there's no place for that. And one of the things he was talking about that really hit home for me is he was talking about when he first started crocheting, he worked with what he had. He was given yarn from family and friends, 
and saved up his money to buy inexpensive yarns to work with. And that's how I started 40 years ago. As a teenager, um, I would save my allowance and go and get yarn from Kmart. I remember when I got my second crochet hook, it was like 49 cents, and I was so excited. I mean, that was a long time ago. And a lot of the ladies in church would see me uh, crocheting, and they would give me yarn, you know, and stuff like that. And it, it makes me sad that he had to address this, because there are, we're in hard times right now when it comes to yarn is expensive. Uh, crochet items and things that we need are expensive and you have to use what you've got and that's why the uh, um, the um, scrap happy crochet along for this year was so important to me we have a lot of yarns I mean look at all the yarn I have but what I'm trying to do is use up some of these yarns that I have make things that are useful and the best thing about it is you can take different kinds or I should say different colors you should stay within the fibers but you can take different colors that you think maybe wouldn't go together and they do and maybe you don't like purple and green together but this other per person does and we shouldn't be critical of other people's designs and other people's way of doing things um i i like to really keep um uh the things that i say uplifting and encouraging because if you're starting to crochet and people criticize you you're not going to want to do it and I think everybody should crochet I really do everybody man woman boy girl like I say all the time if I could teach my dogs to crochet I would because it's such a wonderful art and a wonderful thing to do and so I really want to encourage you that when you see others posting things that maybe you don't agree with don't say anything. <laughs> and may, I mean, maybe you don't like those colors or that pattern's just not for you. Don't say that. Say, good job. Just because you don't care for it doesn't mean they don't. You know what I'm saying? And I think that we really should be a little bit more encouraging to each other in our crochet world. We're a community. We're a community of people who love yarn and love crochet, and a lot of us do, do knitting also, and lots of other yarn crafts. And so if someone's negative to you, maybe someone in your family just doesn't get what you're doing, don't talk to them about crochet, <laughs> you know? If they're not going to get it, that's their loss, right? <laughs> so anyway, I just, it just when I saw that Mikey had posted that video, I, I watched it a couple of times and I thought, I really relate to what he's saying. That's how I started too. I learned to crochet myself from, like I said, library books. And some of the ladies at the church that I happened to be attending at that time were very encouraging to me. And so, I mean, nowadays, you know, back when I was growing up, young kids just didn't crochet. It was considered an old lady's art or an old lady's thing to knit and crochet. But I have always loved everything having to do with yarn. I've loved all kinds of cruel work and um, those plastic, um, I can't remember what they're called, plastic canvas. I always loved those, you know, and I've lear you know, learned to just love everything that you can do with yarn. And I think that we need to be encouraging to each other. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. Go look up Mikey's Crochet Crowd and watch his video. It's not very long. It's like maybe five or seven minutes. It's not very long. But I really agreed with everything he said in there. And I, I think that, um, like I said, the bottom line, let's encourage one another. Okay? All right. Let's move on to something more uplifting and fun. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about how can I hide my stitches when I'm adding, say, um, some embroidery work or a new color or a button or something like that. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about this. And then... Um, where can you find the video? Go to YouTube up in the search box and just put Mikey Crochet Crowd. It'll come up. Okay, use that search box on YouTube when you're looking because it's a great help to you to find what you're looking for. And then once you, um, once you subscribe to his channel, his videos will pop up in your feed. All right? If you want videos to pop up in your feed like mine, hit that like button or the subscribe button and you'll get their videos to pop it up in your feed. All right, all right, let's go over here. I'm going to come over to this other camera, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. Now, I've got some, I'm moving a bag. That's why the crunchy sound. 
Also, I thought I'd tell you, I've got some zacatas that keep buzzing outside my window today. So if you hear a buzzy sound, it's not someone with a, with a chainsaw. It's the, the zacatas. And they're calling each other because they're, you know, wanting to make more zacatas. <laughs> All right, so I've got some swatches here. And I want to show you a couple of different things you can do to help hide some of your stitches. All right, so I'm going to start with this square. And one of the things that... Um, I do when I'm stitching in rows, whether it's single crochet, double crochet, this one is half double crochet, however that you're doing that. I'm going to grab this. I think I'll use the white one just so it'll be a little easier to see. Um, what I do when I'm bringing in a new color is I'll bring in that new color. Make sure I'm in the center here. Let's move that up. Okay. All right, we'll do our chain one because we're doing half double crochets and I want to chain one on these rows. All right, so then we turn our work. Well, if you leave these two over here, you're going to have to weave them in and we're going to weave them in anyway. But what I do in order to get them in and not uh, make bumps on the side is I'll go ahead and stitch over those strands of yarn where I joined in just for a couple of stitches, maybe three or four. Okay, so I'm stitching over them. And I'm going just a little bit loose because I'm trying to make it so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so I've stitched over four stitches. And then I'll just say finish that row. And just finish. I'm doing half double crochets here. I would do the same if I was doing singles or doubles or triples. And depending on the stitch pattern, you know, shells and stuff, I might do it that way. But the reason that I do, let me grab one of these needles over here. The reason that I do it this way is it makes a nice edge. It doesn't leave a bump where you weave that in. And then you can give that just a slight tug, make sure it's tucked in nicely. That string there is too small, so I should have left a longer string there. But what you'll do is you'll come back in with your needle and you'll just weave that in. And the key to this being nice and neat is when you weave this in, you'll go through stitches and fibers of the yarn like this. You'll go through those fibers. Let me put that back on my needle. And you want to stay in the color of the yarn that you're working with. If I would have made this stitch too deep and come down here into this light orange, it might show through on the back. All right, I'm not going to cut that orange one because I didn't weave that in, but I'm going to cut this white one so you can see. And that makes a nice, neat row on both sides. And your edge doesn't have a bump on it where you join that yarn in. All right, that's one thing that I do. All right, now, the other thing I wanted to address in the back of our yarn and this is just a swatch of three rows of double crochet, similar to how you make a coaster. And this would make a nice coaster. All right, so if we're going to embroider something on there, like I um, might want to do a smile. So what I do is you don't want to go all the way through unless you're going to put a back on it. Okay, and so sometimes you'll come up through just to start, and I got a knot in there, let's get that out of there. We'll leave this tail for weaving in, all right? All right, so now I'm just gonna stitch a smile. So I'm just gonna go through the tops of these stitches. Good, there we go. All right, I pulled that wrong. Let's start this again. <laughs> I got a snag there. All right, so we'll go through just the tops of the stitches. And I'm going to hold that string in the back so I don't pull it out. And we're just going through the tops, going through the loops we see on the top. All right, so I'm going to make a couple more stitches here. And this one kind of pulls, so you want to pooch it up a little. All right, I'm going to make another stitch going through there. All right, so made off I go all the way up here say and make my smile now let's look on the back 
you can't see it because I didn't come all the way through. But I do have this where I started. All right, so then I'll take this. All right, and I have a couple of strings here that I just didn't weave those in. So what we'll do is we'll go in underneath those stitches and you want to hide those and so what you'll do is you'll go down in but make sure you don't go all the way through because you want to grab a couple of fibers and then go back the way you came now it may not be perfect you might have a you know you can see it through just a little right there but it makes much neater appearance if you're going to be able to see the back of your work you've still got your smile on the front all right, I want to show you one other thing on this type of thing. Sometimes I will make a French knot eyeball or belly button or something. And so what I'll do is I'll come up. We're going to go through a stitch. I'm going to make a little stitch like this. And that's going to help my French knot not pull through because I'm stitching it on a stitch. All right, so then I will... Do my three or four wraps, however big we want our French knot to be. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull it through the back. Here's our tail of yarn. And we don't want that to come out, right? And so you'll go in. And if you're going to make another eye, you'll go between these stitches. You're not showing on the front, but you're showing on the back. And you'll decide where, how far over you want that eye. So I'm going to go under again. And again, it may not be perfect, but it's going to hide it nicely. All right, so here's where I came up. And we're going to make that second French knot. Three wraps, and we go back in. So we have two little French knot eyeballs on the front, and we just have our two tails of yarn on the back. All right, I have a little loop there. Sometimes you'll get those, because it can't be perfect, but it is going to keep it neat. And then we'll just pull that back up there. And then you'll do the same thing with this one. And no, sometimes you'll have a little bit of yarn showing, you know, but, it's going to keep it neater than if you would have stitched all those stitches on the back of it, okay? It looks a lot better than if you would have stitched through all of this and all of this, okay? And so where the key is on this is you want to go, when you're stitching on the front, make sure you're stitching in stitches and not holes and you're going through only the top layer of those stitches on the top. And when you weave in in the back, you're gonna go just in that layer of stitches on the back, but not through the front, all right? And it's a little difficult at first until you really kind of see what you're doing. And it's really, really hard not to be messy. It really is. And so, it, and even though it takes a few more minutes you know, maybe to get it done, it is going to look a lot neater. All right, so the other thing I wanted to show you is buttons. Um, I'm just gonna grab this needle since I already have it threaded with this white yarn. And when you have something like this that's a little more open, stitching in those back stitches can be a little bit more difficult, but you'll have to kind of go up your stitch like this when you're doing that, doing something similar to what we did on these. All right, it can be done. It's just going to take a little bit more work. All right, I'm going to pull this tight because I want that hole gone. And I'll weave that in later. But I want to show you what I do with a button. Okay, so I've got a button with two holes. And what I do is I go through like this. And make a loop. And you try to do this just through your top layers not through your bottom if you're going to be showing the bottom of your work okay and then you just take your button and if it's just for decoration you just have to make a few stitches 
if it's going to be holding something, <clears throat> you know, like a strap of a purse or, or a belt or something, sweater closed, then you're gonna need to make more stitches. But you want to try to go through just the top stitches and go through stitches, not holes. Okay, and then if you don't want it to show on the back, pull it this way once you have as many stitches as you want. Now, if it's not going to matter, you can pull those two strings to the back, pull them and tie a regular knot. But if you don't want it to show on the front, you can, or on the back, I mean, on the front, underneath the button, you can tie that knot just like that. And tie it underneath that button. And I still tie three, you know, I like to tie three knots. And be careful, my scissors keep magnifying my needle. I don't know why it does that. It is the funniest thing. <laughs> Alrighty, so anyway, up under here, you wanna be careful not to clip your project, but clip that. And then you get a nice looking button on the front. Hi, baby. Rosie's whining at me a little bit. Um, but you get a nice looking button on the front and then the back is nice and neat. All right, so those are some things that you can do to help your, your work be just a little bit neater. I know I get criticized a lot from other fabric or uh, um, crochet pattern designers because I stitch over my ends and then weave it in, and I don't know why they think that's wrong. It, um, a lot of other designers won't do it that way, but I think it makes a much neater edge on your work, and it makes it a lot easier when you go to do your stitches around the edge of, say, a blanket or something. It just, my goal in life is to be neat and tidy, but also to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> you know, I don't want to make more work for myself if it's not going to work, <laughs> you know. So anyway, those are just some things that you can do to make your work a lot neater, okay? All right, so let's talk about what we did this week. And let me move my little bit of the swatch mess out of the way. And I want to show you some things that we did this week. Now, I'm doing a series on um, uh, school spirit items. Uh, for back to school and we did the school spirit headband and ear warmer and then I updated this is a pattern that I wrote back in 2011 or 2012 and I updated the pattern and it now has four sizes it has newborn to three months six to twelve months uh, which is the toddler size baby toddler child and adult and the neat thing about these is there's only there's there's four sizes. But as you're making one, if it's coming out a little bit small, you can always go up a hook size. If it's coming out a little bit tight, I said that backwards. If it's coming out a little bit tight or small, go up a hook size. If it's coming out too loose, go down a hook size. Because it's a basic double crochet hat, and then we do the striping with single crochets and half double crochets. Is Rosie pacing? <laughs> so anyway, um, and I tried to just use some fun colors. No, no schools that I know of. Um, although this is the uh, Mustang Bronco colors, black and red and white. So yeah, maybe I did have a school in mind. Because <laughs> the Mustang um, high school here are the Mustang Broncos, which is fun. <laughs> so anyway, and as always, all of my crochet pattern designs you can find those links to those down under the this video in that description box. You can also find it on Ravelry and also on my blog. And those links are all there for you so that you can find these if you want them, okay? I After every time I do a live video, people are like, well, where's the links? The patterns that I talk about all have a written pattern, a photo tutorial, and a video. And those links are down in the description box underneath every single video. Okay? All right. The other thing we did were the pencil bookmarks. And this was super fun to make. And then I showed you how you can add a hook to it, use it as a on your backpack or something. And I, I think that these are super great 
to give to a teacher. You could make a bookmark like this or make it a magnet or an applique on a book bag or something. Put it in a card to the first day of school for your teacher, your kids' teachers, if you can, and tell them how much you appreciate their teaching and that you're going to be their supporter, whatever you can do, you know, things like that. You know, you may not be able to be a room mom. I don't know if they still do that. Or PTA. I don't even know if they still do that. I have to ask my daughter because I know she's very active with the music department and the band because both of her kids are involved in that. But, um, and the other thing is I had a lot of people ask me about doing this as a crayon and I was just going to kind of explain it, but I decided that because I got so many questions about, can you make that into a crayon instead of a pencil? I'm going to do that on this Friday fun day and show you how you can make the same pattern into a pencil. It's a little bit different. We're not going to use any front or back post stitches. It's just a matter of the color changing. Okay, so I'll be looking for that on this Friday's Friday fun day. And then yesterday, there we go, we did the owl coaster. I love this because it is a coaster. There's plenty of room for your cup down there. But you can also do this as a ornament. I did this one double-sided like I showed you in the video, which makes a nice neat back. You don't have to worry about all those color changes as much. But this makes a nice applique. It makes a nice Christmas ornament. Do it in Christmas colors. Do it in fall colors. And um, let's see, you can make it into a fridgy, put a magnet on the back, stick it on your fridge. And they're just fun. They're just silly and fun and a great way to use up cotton and acrylic yarns because you can do either one. I like to make my coasters in cotton, but you can do it in acrylic or whatever yarns you have on hand, okay? And so that was the other pattern. And again, all three of these patterns, the links are in the notes underneath this video. All right, now the last thing I wanted to tell you about, let me move some stuff here, is that I found, with my husband's help, the Michaels here in Oklahoma City. I was so spoiled living in Parker, Colorado, because I had a Michaels and a Hobby Lobby just less than five minutes from my house. I mean, I mean, it was. It was super close. Well, the Hobby Lobby's not too bad. It's, it's probably 15 minutes, so it's not too bad. But I didn't know where the Michaels was, and I looked online, and I, we found one over on the other side. Um, so my husband on sun, or Saturday, he said, we have some running around to do. We'll stop by there so you can go in there. It's a very nice Michaels. And um, I, I found two yarns I want to show you. They're not new. Every time I show you yarns, I get people that go, those aren't new. I already saw those. Okay, these are not new. They're just ones that I found that I really like. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is, um, it's called Sunrise. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually going to show this to you in this other camera because I want you to see it. Isn't that beautiful? It absolutely looks like a sunrise. I got two of these. You know I love yellow, and the brightness of this is just amazing. Three ounces, 160 yards. Um, it's acrylic yarn called Sunrise, medium number four. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. I got two of them. And I've already been playing with this one, you can see. <laughs> and so I think we're going to have something fun to do with this next month. All right. Now, as I'm walking around, my husband goes, have you seen this? And he pulls this one out. Okay. This is called Yarnspiration Latte Cakes. And I have done some work, of course, with latte cakes or latte, I should say. Someone will correct me. 8.8 .8 ounces, 530 yards. It is a bulky number five. And let's see, it's 58% acrylic, 42% nylon. It is super soft. And I did notice that the other latte or latte cake, the yarn in it was a little bit thinner than this one. So this does look like a true five bulky five and look at these beautiful colors it moves from like a teal to a soft kind of blush to pink to like a really soft yellow and then this bright magenta 
and this teal. Isn't it beautiful? I'm real excited to work with this one. And having eight and a 8.8 ounces is a good amount of yarn. And I think this would make a beautiful shawl or wrap. My husband picked this out. He's really great at finding beautiful colors. Let's see, what is it called? It's called Rose Scented. That is a perfect color or a perfect name for this color yarn. Okay, so those are the two yarns I'm going to show you. I am trying really hard not to buy yarn. And I, I bought yarn when I first when we first moved down here at the Hobby Lobby. My daughter and I went on a Saturday. And um, we walked around Hobby Lobby. They'd already had all their sales because I didn't want, I knew if I went in Hobby Lobby when they were having all of their sales, you know, because they do their spring sale, they do the clear out, then they bring in all the new yarns. I knew I would be so tempted to um, buy a bunch of it. And I'm trying really hard not to do that. So Lisa says she loves my husband cool <laughs> he really is great at picking out yarns and spotting yarns and he and he enjoys going with me he really does um a lot of husbands don't like going and looking at yarn i think it's silly and that's okay you know i don't mind but my husband has always enjoyed going with me he doesn't go with me all the time but i think that it gives him joy to find some things that i like that I may not have spotted, you know? So anyway, I do appreciate that about him. I saw a meme this week that says, find a man that loves you um, and says, honey, you can have this yarn and I'm okay with that or something like that. And I'm like, I did, I found that guy <laughs> 40 years ago. <laughs> I was just thinking, I said I've been crocheting for 40 years, but I've been married for 40 years. So I've had to have been crocheting for over 50 years. <laughs> Wow, that's old. <laughs> On another note, my husband turned 60 yesterday. Um, and uh, so, <laughs> when is it 60s the new 40? Well, I feel like I'm the new 80, to be honest with you, this week. <laughs> anyway, that is all I've got for you. That's a lot of stuff. And I really do want to encourage you to encourage each other. One of the things in our Facebook group that we have, uh, PPD Puppy Love Crochet, <clears throat> we have a great group of people. I love seeing all the things they're working on, all the things you're working on. And I also love <clears throat> how encouraging everybody is to each other. You know, and I, I've said this many times, we're all at a different place in our crochet journey. And just because you've been crocheting for 40 years doesn't mean you've arrived. It means you're still learning. And if you're just crocheting for six months, you're still learning too. And we're all still learning because crochet is an ever-changing, ever-growing um, art. New yarns, new techniques, old techniques that are new again. You know, it's all, it's all fun. Because we need to be learning in our craft and in our crochet. I would get bored if I wasn't learning all the time, you know? So anyway, oh, yesterday was Alicia's birthday also. Awesome. Happy birthday. <laughs> my daughter's birthday is the 14th. And what's funny is my husband turned 60, my daughter's turning 40. And so between them, they have 100 years of experience. <laughs> Okay, I'm done being silly. <laughs> I'm going to let you go, but I want to thank you all for being a part of my YouTube channel. And if you want to come join that group, PPD Puppy Love Crochet on Facebook, the link is also down in the notes under this video, okay? And you will have to answer a couple of questions. We're real picky about who we let in because we had some issues with spammers and we don't want those. We want people that love to crochet like we do. All right. Let you go. Bye-bye now.